Okay, hi everyone. We're gonna. I've had a, I've seen a couple of questions about making enemy spawners on the forums, and I, even though I think they were talking about dungeon defense kind of spawners, um, you know, tower defense kind of ones, I'm still gonna show off how I went about making mine. It kind of got me thinking about you know maybe it would help them, maybe other people would like to see it. Uh, mine's a little bit more like a bayonetta, Devil May Cry one, where you walk in. Everyone always forgets to turn off their autosave when they record, and so did I. Um, mine's a little more like Devil May, Tr Devil May Cry and um, Bayonetta, where you walk in and the enemies spawn when it happens. But either way, I figured I'd go off and show how it went about it. And you have to bear with me. It's like the sixth time I've recorded this, because I keep getting phone calls from everyone I know. Um, so, in the middle of the route, we're just going to set up a billboard. I think I got that from Chance Ivy, who just sets up all of his billboards. Um, as the route so he can move whatever he wants off from that um, in case he wants him to go up or down which is smart and normally I have the visibility off for these billboards but in this case I have it on because I want to be able to see where the center is because that's where the enemies are going to spawn from wherever I place this down from there we're just going to add in a collision box and of course we'll need collision on it so I got overlap events no physics collision, and I have it as a world dynamic. You can have this set up as whatever you need it to be. I have it only overlapping with my pawns. Once again, I've explained that that's that my pawns are only Alice. Um, she's the only one who can trigger that. All the enemies are physics bodies. All the swords are vehicles. Blah blah blah. Um, so she's the only one who's ever going to be able to trigger this. But I have that set. Of course, hidden in the game, you're not going to want to see that when you're playing. And then, um, and then I think we're just going to need to set up the begin overlap. Um, just go ahead on component begin overlap. So what happens when we trigger it? And we're actually going to go into the construction script so we can show off um, how we're going to be able to place that. From there, we're just going to do a um, a, tr a transform. We're going to need to set this transform because we need to set them differently in different parts of your level. Not every room is going to be exactly the same shape. Um, so the, the spawner trigger is not going to be the same shape either. So we're always going to set the, the transform in the construction here. Um, and so we're going to need variables to spawn the box location, the box rotation, the box scale, and each one important that you make sure to set up as editable. So each one of these is going to be editable so we can so we can change them and that they'll show up here in our details panel, which is why I have the details panel up for once. Um, the other thing that's pretty important here on the location, we're going to do show 3D widget. We're going to turn that on as well. And what we got here, because these are editable, in the box scale, you know, you can just move this, whatever you need to be. Just hover over the number and you'll get these arrows going both ways. It's way easier just to drag than trying to guess what number you needed over and over again. Um, and then this way it lets you also just make sure you can place it exactly where you want. So. Alice can't walk back here and not spawn enemies. You can just keep dragging until she can't get anywhere without without spawning this. It's obviously quite tall, um, so it's not really going to be too big of a concern that she's not going to be able to uh, jump over this. But in this case, I want her to spawn just a little bit closer to the stairs, so I don't have to run so much. Mm, that'll do there. Um, and then what we have, because we set up that 3D widget in the location, that's that's what this is, a spawn box location. That's this 3D widget. This is where the enemies are going to spawn, and I want them to spawn there. This is the ground. But say for some reason you had it set up that you had a level underneath here before they get up to there, and they, she jumped and she triggered this box, and she spawned the enemies up here even though she's not even up there. Well, luckily, you can move this box completely off from the actor that it's technically attached to. So you can move this move this around with this, this 3D widget. So we just move that up, and now we can't spawn anything below anymore. We can place this on the other side of the level if we needed to. So you can have where they spawn uh, in a completely different location than where this box trigger is. Um, and in fact, I center it off just a little bit more, only because it'll bother me because I'm crazy. All right. So that's pretty important. That's pretty helpful um, on that. Since you're going to be using that a lot, might as well do it. Um, from there, we're going to do the logic what happens when Alice walks in there. I'm going to do the get player pawn. I'm going to make sure that it's equal to the person that we, we hit, even though I'm sure it is. She's the only pawn, so it's the only person that it's going to collide with, but I'm crazy. We've established. Uh, make sure that's true. I'm going to do a do once because I only want them to spawn one time. 
and then I immediately turn off all the collision and I not only do that because it's just a guarantee that it only does it once but also because uh, this way I don't have a bunch of collision checks happening every time she maybe bumps into it uh, we don't really need that it's not gonna need to ask the, the logic because it doesn't have collision anymore I'm um, just drag right off of the other actor I'm gonna cast to my character so I'll cast to Alice and I'm gonna let her know that this spawner this blueprint actor that she's currently in is the current enemy spawner. They're going to talk to each other later when they do waves and whatnot. Um, so that's why I have this set and that sends it right back to her. Um, so this is why we're just dragging off of it. Just get a reference to yourself, this enemy spawner. I'm going to get the uh, actor location. I'm going to get where Alice currently is and I'm going to set that as the player's location right there. You can ignore all this. This is that lightning spawn stuff. So from after setting the player location, we're just going to go straight to our sequence and immediately just pops these off really quickly. Um, I only have four enemies currently available in my enemy spawner. I may add a fifth. That's what that is. If you want to add more, you just keep adding a pin and copying and pasting most of this stuff over here with changing a few variables. Um, so from there, immediately, because there's no delay on this one, it's going to spawn an enemy. If you want to add a delay, you got that. Maybe make them walk a little bit further. What you want the trigger back, who knows. Whatever you want, you have the option because it's a variable. But immediately it's going to um, fire off enemy number one. And we're going to check to see if the number of enemies of enemy number one is greater than or equal to the number of enemies to make. Um, basically once it becomes equal to it, we're going to say, well, you're done. Well, that's true. And then we're going to check an all done function at the bottom. We'll get to that later. Um, for now, though, we've spawned no one, so it's not going to be more than or equal to the number of enemies to make. So that's going to be false. We're going to come over here and we're going to set their spawn point. We're going to get the actor location. That's where this, uh, that's where this little billboard's going to be. And we're going to get a spawn radius. My spawn radius right now is 750 unreal units. So anywhere around that radius, 750. It's going to get a random point in that radius, and that's the location which they're going to spawn from. Um, so anywhere randomly within within this or whatever of Unreal Units 750. So that's how I spawn my guys. Um, you may go about it a different way. I know that there's a way you can uh, the, omit the middle, and I may actually add that. I have it saved somewhere. I just haven't put it in. I'll have to see how it plays. Anyways, um, the player location we're going to need because we're going to want them to look at wherever Alice is standing. This way they're not facing a wall or something looking really stupid. So we're going to get their location from where the player location is. We're going to get the find look rotation. We're going to break that. We only want the yaw. We don't want them ro tilting up or turning sideways or anything crazy. We're going to make a transform. That's that location we got randomly from here. We're going to get the rotation from here, and then we're going to get the scale and leave that as 1 so they spawn at the correct size. And we're going to set enemy spawn transform, and then we're just moving right along. That's all we're doing. All we did was set that, and we moved along. So we set that, we moved along, lightning spawn you can ignore, and with that enemy spawn transform, we're going to use that to spawn the actor. So we just set this, and now we're going to spawn an actor where we set. From there, we're going to spawn enemy type 1. Um, that's going to be right here. You just pull that off and hit promote to variable. If you ever don't know if you should use the blue version or the purple version, not only is it awesome because it's always color coordinated, but just in case, it's just easier just to pull off and hit promote to variable. You get exactly what you needed immediately. Spawn even if collided because they're going to be in the ground, at least my enemies are. And then I just do that logic where I shoot them up in the air and then I turn on their uh, static uh, static world collision. Um, while they're in the air, so they actually land, of course, when they when they hit the ground this time. Um, and then after we spawn that, we're gonna need to pull this off and spawn a default controller. I think this is made automatically for you once you do spawn default controller, because we need to give them a brain. So after you spawn the actor, spawn default controller, and then we're gonna take the number of enemy one that's on the board. We're gonna add one because we just created somebody. We're going to set that as the new number of enemy one on the board. From there, we're going to delay. This one's a, a different delay than the one we had before. We only use that the one time to offset the delays a little bit so they're not all spawning immediately at the exact same time. Um, 
So we're going to set that to 0.4. And that's because I expected to have another enemy. This one you got to play around with and see what works for you. I like all my enemies to spawn 0.2 seconds off from each other currently. Um, and I can change this, luckily. I can do it whenever I need to or per spawner. So 0.4 seconds later, it's going to spawn another one of these enemy ones. And it's going to keep going like that. But luckily, because I immediately put this to a 0.2 delay, this delay on spawn number 2, um, in the meantime, while this is waiting for its 0.4, it's going to spawn enemy 2. So it's going to spawn this one, it's going to hit that delay, and it's going to spawn this one 0.2 seconds later. So I only have 0.2 second wait on that. And then 0.2 seconds later, because it's 0.4, so 0.2 more seconds after this one's delayed, gone it's gonna loop this and it's just gonna kinda of keep doing this so they're always 0.2 seconds apart so each one of these are only 0.2 seconds apart from the other 0 0.4 0.6 once you can click somewhere that it'll like 0.6 and then same thing here these are 0.4 so it's for two if, if I had to do three enemies I'd do 0.6 I'd change that to 0.6 I'd change this to 0.6 four enemies 0.8, you know, you get the point, change that to 0.8, change that to 0.8. So each one would just keep rotating 0.2 off from each other. Uh, you can play around with that however you need, whatever you need to do. In fact, I know I have at least some point where the second wave, the enemy only spawns on the second wave, and he spawns a second after everyone else is basically is done. Anyways, point is, when it's done, it's going to say, I'm done here, these are I'm going to say I'm done here. Most of the time these will just be done nearly immediately. And we're going to do the all done check because it checks for that. And it just simply is asking exactly what you would think. Is number one done? It's most of the time that will hit false, but when it does it will say no, is number two done? Is number three done? Is number four done? And if so, we then take the current wave we are on, we add one, and we set that as a new wave. This is zero currently, so after we do this now, we'll see that it's uh, it's gone up one wave, one wave is done. Um, I'm going to stop there. I'll just go ahead and put the second portion of this video right up. Uh, it's just this one's going to get a little too long. So I'm going to stop there and we'll finish up on actually finishing up this in just a second. So hold on. I'll be right back.